Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei teleported to Ben 10 and had on the tricks part 2. Before we start please go support Photon DX10 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. There was some translation mistakes in the first part, I have corrected some of them with the help of author, including aliens names. Thank you so much author for helping. Chapter 07 botanical terror attack on Crater Lake. Avise, we were driving through the area that was going to take us to Crater Lake and we were having one of the strangest foods cooked by Grandpa Max for dinner. Babacol Granton, slugs genetically crossed with Brussels sprouts, although Gwen and Ben are grossed out, oh, I like it, and maybe I'll cook it for my friends back at home. Gwen. What is this thing? Even being a vegetarian I find it disgusting. Gwen said complaining about dinner. Max. Babacol Granton when I was still a plumber, we genetically crossed a slug with Brussels sprouts. It didn't serve much as a biological weapon, but you won't find a better source of vitamins Grandpa Max said. Issei. And it's really delicious, I need the recipe, seriously I said with my mouth full and enjoying dinner. When? Do you feed your own grandchildren and our new friend a failed experiment from 30 years ago? That has many bad things. Gwen said, complaining and about to stick her fork in the babacol, but Ben and I saw something through the window that alarmed us. Ben. Gwen, stop don't eat that Ben warned. Max. Oh no, Ben this time I didn't try your tricks. For once you're going to finish your vegetables, Max warned. They say. That are the sticklebacks that are by the rust bucket gate I said, seeing two sticklebacks outside. Ben. Ready. Ben asked. They say. Ready I answered. The two. It's hero time the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into hell and ice, and we destroyed the sticklebacks, but the next enemy came to us. The stickleback charger. Then big chill, Ben, the thorny chargers try to impale their victims, let's get out of their way if we find ourselves in a fight. I said, describing the thorny carheader. We defeated the thorny chargers with a combo of fire and ice, and proceeded to continue along the huge pod that led to the forest and avoided traps, and ran into more thorny trees again. We climbed the pods and there was a mechanism that required strong aliens and I transformed into a human gaussor to put the metal box into the mechanism and activate the ramp and we transformed into a canonbald and a spider monkey respectively, we came deeper into the forest and more came to us thorny trees and a new enemy. The mace. Then spider monkey, Ben, there are some similarities between the DNA of this mace, swamp fire, and wildveen. It could be a species of her respective home planets. I said, describing Mace and we proceeded to attack him, but he threw cactus grenades at us, but I returned them with my spider webs, and Ben proceeded to crush the sticklebacks that were coming towards him. After five minutes, we defeated them and proceeded to continue to see him. Polluted river water that reminded me of the smell of urine after eating asparagus. Ben canonbled, this smells terrible, it makes me want to vomit Ben said when smelling the stinky water. They say. Yes, it's like someone peed here after eating five kilos of asparagus I said disgusted. Author's note. Those of you who didn't know, pee smells horrible if you eat asparagus. We continued the path and they attacked more alien plants, but we defeated them with a combo of wade and spider webs, and we proceeded with our mission, and we saw a mechanism that required strong and fast aliens. We changed to forearms and jet ray for this occasion, and we continued walking and there was another mechanism and I changed to big chill and bent to canonbal to end the fire and air amp was activated, and when using it more alien plants came to us, and we defeated them with a combo of wade and ice and we continued with the mission, and we activated the buttons to activate the ramp, and I flew away. So that bent could use the ramp and we came across more plants and we defeated them without problems and we returned to the tartana. They say. We're back. I said. Ben. Yes and we've already finished trimming the weeds, where is M. Care Ward? Ben like a Cholito asked. Max. Another alien plant infestation has been reported in Seattle. But don't worry, you and Issei have at least an hour to eat before we arrive. Said Max, putting Ben's dinner on the table to eat and since I ate it without complaining, I had to wash the dishes tonight. Ben. Yes, this is a reward, I don't even want to think about the punishment. Ben said complaining about his reward. They say. Come and be quiet, Ben, a very big and most nefarious enemy awaits us in Seattle. I said and Grandpa Max turned on the rust bucket and we went to our boss fight in the city of Seattle. The plant dragon. The growth of alien plants has already reached Seattle, Ben and I have to destroy the plague and save the city before it's too late. Chapter 08 battle in Seattle Issei and Ben vs Plant Dragon. Ah Issei. We were driving and we saw that all of Seattle was infested with alien plants, and we saw how the Seattle needle fell off the tower, and we knew that the Plant Dragon was behind all this. Ben. Wow, that thing is huge Ben said. Issei. Yes, and very dangerous I said. Max. Looks like whatever's been throwing all those seeds around has taken root high above the city. Grandpa Max said. Ben. And Issei and I are supposed to fight against that. Ben asked. Issei. Yes, and we have to destroy it I said. When? 
Think of it as revenge for every vegetable you've been forced to eat. Gwen said. Ben. It's time for revenge. Ben said. I say. And to co tear weeds. I said and Max parked the rust bucket behind the entrance, and Ben and I used the elevator which luckily was working, and when we got to the top, we saw the huge brown chrysalis, and it started to crack, and a huge plant shaped like a dragon was seen. It was the plant dragon, the two. It's hero time the two of us said in unison and transformed into a canonvolt and a spider monkey to start the battle. I tried to distract the plant by throwing spider webs at its face, while it proceeded to pluck its cores and apparently it worked and Ben jumped on the ramp to attack it and hit it all over the face, but by doing that he removed the spider webs and his cores regenerated and he proceeded to spit violet flames which luckily we both avoided and we repeated the same strategy as before and we managed to destroy the cores and Ben got on the ramp to attack him and managed to hit him a second time and the same thing was repeated process, but with Ben distracting the plant dragon and me attacking the cores, I wish Drake, Rias or Ravel were here to burn this monstrosity. After five minutes I managed to destroy the cores, and Ben and I proceeded to use the ramp and attack the dragon by bouncing against it. The walls and me swinging like Spider-Man and just when I thought I was going to give the plant dragon the coup de grace, he pushed me, but the monster didn't know that that was a distraction, so that it could swallow Ben and destroy him from the inside like hell. And I saw how the plant dragon exploded into a thousand pieces, and Ben came out like hell and in his hand were two crystals from the Omnitrix, one green and one red, and we saw how all the roots of the dome rotted, and we saw that Grandpa Max and Gwen they came here and we transformed back into humans. Max. You did it, Ben and the same Max said. Gwen. Yes, and you have gotten two Omnitrix crystals for each one. Gwen said. Ben. Yes, Lord another Omnitrix crystal let's see who we will be now, Issei. Issei. Let's find out I said and Ben and I transformed into our new recovered aliens. Wilvin and Swampfire. Ben Wilvin, Wilvin Ben Como Wilvin shouted. They say Swampfire, Swampfire I shouted like Swampfire. Ben Wilvin, oh yes I'm an evil green machine that kicks ass Ben said and started to get sick of the Swampfire smell. They say Swampfire, sorry, the Swampfire species normally smells bad by nature, but I have fire and plant powers at the same time. I said describing Swampfire, and I always thought it was a fusion between Heaplist and Wilveen. Gwen. Well of course Gwen said. Ben Wilveen, what, Gwen? Ben asked. Gwen. That monster plant must have been loaded with Wilveen and Swampfire DNA. All of this can't be a coincidence, why do all our bad memories suddenly come to haunt us? Gwen said. Max. Unfortunately, all the evidence points to a single individual Max said and pointed towards the sky. The say Swampfire, Vilgax I said. Normal Pav. Meanwhile in the Chimerian Hammer, the ruthless Vilgax is seen releasing his anger towards his drones, because his plans apparently fail. Vilgax. Why? Why am I surrounded by useless incompetent idiots? I got rid of the valuable Omnitrix crystal so that young Tennyson and his new friend would be destroyed, and the miserable pawns to whom I so generously entrusted the crystals are incapable of doing anything other than failing me Vilgax shouted. Don't worry, Lord Vilgax, now we will begin phase 4, to crush Ben Tennyson and Issei Hyde you said, the mysterious villain among the shadows next to a being with a ghostly appearance. Vilgax. Yes, you too, however, you have done well. Recovering the void projector has been invaluable just bring me the last item I need to complete my plans, and you'll have the Omnitrix, the child, and Issei Haidu to do as you wish Vilgax said, and his two cronies were revealed, especially the evil woman who stole the vacuum projector and showed them two Omnitrix crystals. The first was a blue-gray alien ghost with an upside-down skull and spikes on its shoulders and hands, sharp claws like scythes and teeth like knives and one fuchsia eye. It was Scare, alias Spectral. The other one was a hexy woman with black hair and purple eyes and wings as black as night, and she was wearing a BDSM outfit, and she had shoulder pads with two spikes on the side, and she had black leather boots and gloves, and what she was wearing on her left wrist was a bracelet. Rosa. That was the fallen angel who killed Issei on their first date. Yuma Mano, aka Rainer, Rainer. Issei Haidu, get ready to live your worst nightmare and this time Rhea's Grimory isn't there to save you Rainer said and let out a psychotic laugh, showing her desire for revenge to the Seker Yuite, and Spectra laughed with her. Avisei, after defeating the plant dragon and recovering the Wildvan and Fangosi crystals, the Tennysons and I decided to eliminate the last pockets of resistance, and I just fell unconscious and noticed that everything before me turned black. Ben. Issei, wake up, what's wrong? Ben asked, worried about me. Second act finished. Avrias, we were still in Issei's gaming room and my friends and I couldn't believe who we saw on the screen, Rainer and she is in the game to get revenge on Issei. Rias. Rainer. But if I have destroyed it, how is it alive? I asked when I saw the fallen angel who killed Issei on their first date in the game. Gibba. Impossible, Azazel, how is it possible that Rainer is alive and helping Vilgax and Spectral? 
Kiba asked, being in a panic and not being able to believe what his eyes were seeing. Azazel. I think the gamer helmet has downloaded not only Issei's mind, but also Raynor's soul, and brought her as an enemy in the game for Issei to face her. Akeno. Of all our past enemies, why her? Akeno said. Asia. It will be because she wants revenge on Issei, and since she knows that you are not in the game to help Issei, Rias will have more chances to kill him and Ben. Asia said and Arena started to have a somewhat horrible hypothesis. Arena. Or worse, knowing that Issei's mind is in the game, if he manages to kill Issei and Ben, he will have a method of getting out of there and returning to the real world using Issei's body, and he will have the boosted gear to cause chaos and destruction to Kuo and the entire world Arena said, and we realized that Raynor could use Issei's unconscious body to escape from the video game and use the boosted gear for her evil purposes. Zenovia. We have to stop her before she does that. Zenovia said and we noticed that Issei started to move, and we saw that she opened her eyes for 5 seconds, and she fainted again. Roswis. Issei moved and now he's unconscious again. Kaneko, how are you doing in the game? Roswis asked worriedly. Kaneko. I have already reached level 11, but we only have 24 hours left to return Issei's mind to her body before her parents return. Kaneko said. Asper. Hurry up, Kaneko, we're running out of time, Gasper said worriedly. Ravel. Calm down, Gasper, we still have time to save Issei and stop that fallen angel Ravel said, and we saw that my brother Serzichas and his wife Grafia entered. Serzichas. What's going on here, it seems like you're more worried than usual. My brother asked. Grafia. What's happening? And what happened to Issei? Grafia asked. Rias. Issei played video games with Azazel's invention in the middle of an electrical storm, and he was hit by lightning, and his mind was downloaded to his console and now we're trying to beat the 23 levels of Ben 10 Protector of Earth to get him out of there and he worse, there is a fallen angel in the game, seeking revenge, I explained to my brother between tears. Serzichas. Azazel, what were you bucking thinking? Creating an invention that traps your mind in a video game is a huge stupid thing you did my brother said angrily. Azazel. Don't worry, Kaneko is in it and could be the key to how to return Issei to his body, but we only have 24 hours before Issei's parents return. Azazel said. Raphia. I have an idea but it's tricky, let's teleport the gaming room to the dimension of the raiding game that Rhea's faced Riser in, there the laws of time are irrelevant and we have more time to save Issei. Graphia suggested and nodded. Rhea's. It's our only hope. Issei, hold on, we will save you. I said and Kaneko started level 11 of the game, while my brother, Grafia and Azazel are in charge of teleporting the gaming room to the raiding game dimension, to counteract the effects of time and space, while Laysia, Zenovia and Arena are in charge of help Issei return to his body. The second act of the story ends here. But Vilgax and Raynor are using the stolen Omnitrix crystals. What will be the plan of these two diabolical villains Issei and the Tennysons, travel to the Midwest to continue the investigation. Chapter 09. Night of terror at effigy mounds the angel of evil returns, Avise, I was waking up and I saw I was lying in bed and Ben, Gwen and Grandpa Max were happy to see me awake. Max. Issei, you're awake, thank goodness. Max said. Gwen. You scared us to death. Gwen said. Issei. What happened to me? I asked the Tennyson family. Ben. You fainted when we were on our way to Yellowstone National Park to kill off the last of the alien plants there, and you were like that, Issei. Where are we now? I asked. Max. We're at Effigy Mounds in Iowa, in my opinion one of the most beautiful places in America. Max said and I noticed that we were in Effigy Mounds or what seems to be a place in Effigy Mounds to camp. Ben. In my opinion, one of the creepiest places in America. Ben said shaking and rubbing his arms in fear and it was true, this is where Spectral and his minions will attack Ben and possibly me in the game, and why do I have the strange feeling that I am running into someone of my kind here. Past. Essay. Well, Effigy Mounds is a cool place, and it reminds me of that time I went on a field trip to Kyoto with my classmates, and I admit that I had a great time learning about its history, it helped me get a 10 on my exam. Of history. I said. Gwen. Who let me know Kyoto, I heard that its temples are very big. Gwen said and I nodded and she, Ben and I sat near the window. Ben. Of all the places we can camp, would you rather sleep in a horrible, scary cemetery? Ben said. They say. You can't have everything Ben, but you're right, something's not right. I said, knowing of the imminent danger. When? Find out, this is precisely the best spiritually oriented place in all of America. Gwen said. Ben? Yeah, but I think it's scary. Ben said. They say. Yes, and I think something horrible is going to happen here. I said and Gwen laughed. Gwen? Wait a minute, are superheroes afraid? Gwen asked in a mocking tone. Ben? No, I just Ben said, but Gwen interrupted him. Gwen? Are some terrible monsters going to catch you? 
Gwen said, but a spectral werewolf came through the window to scare Gwen, and he screamed in fear and ran away through the forest, and Ben and I followed him. The two. It's hero time the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into Wilvin and Swampfire. Then Wilvin, Wilvin Ben Como Wilvin shouted. I say. Swampfire I shouted like Swampfire. Ben Wilvin, I already want to see this alien in action, I say. Ben said. I say Swampfire, what are we waiting for, let's go. I said and we arrived at the entrance to the forest, and the first enemy of the level came to us. The Fang Snail. I say Swampfire, Ben, these Fang Snails contain some traces of Ectonurite and Fallen Angel, how strange I said, describing the Fang Snail that normally would only have traces of Ectonurite, but because it now has traces of Fallen Angel. Ben Wilvin, who knows why. Let's teach those mutts a new trick, the dead dog trick. Ben said and he whipped him with the sole of his arm, and I proceeded to use Swampfire's fire powers, and Ben was impressed with Swampfire, and we continued to the next place where there were more fangs nails in his new form. The Howling Fangs Nail. I say Swampfire, Ben, these fangs nails have developed a devastating sonic attack. I said me and Ben and I proceeded to use a combo of plants and fire, and we defeated the enemies of the place, and we continued walking until we reached a broken bridge. Ben boosted himself with the floating plant balls, and I boosted myself using fire, and there more enemies were waiting for us, and we defeated them with another combo of plants and fire. Ben Wilvin, I must admit, I say, I like Swampfire. Ben said. I say Swampfire, I'm glad you like it, Ben, I think you'll also have one in your Omnitrix, except it's blocked. I said and we were ambushed by more fangs nails, and I decided to use the mud plant control power, and the trees strangled the fangs nails until they were dead. Ben and I switched to XLR8 and Jet Rado activate the Aztec masks and be teleported to the underground grotto beneath effigy mounds. When we got there, new enemies came to us. The mummies. I say Jet Raya, Ben, according to Max, most modern horrors date back to a dimensional gap that opened at the end of the 19th century. I said, describing the Thep Kufin, her mummies, and we proceeded to break their legs to the mummies with a speed combo, and we continued walking through the underground grotto, and Ben changed to Will Veneto boost himself, and their new enemies were waiting for us. The Cyclone Mummies. Ben Jet Raya, Ben, these mummies take advantage of the force of the wind in their attacks. I said, describing the Cyclone Mummies, and we used a combo of plants and speed to defeat the Cyclone Mummies, and we proceeded along the path where more of Spectral's minions attacked us, and Ben and I switched to Canonbolt and Spider Monkey to go up the ramp, and get rid of more obstacles along the way, and in the end we arrived at what seemed to be a cave with a bonfire, and we saw one of Ben's enemies appear by magic. The evil wizard Hex, but Ben, unbeknownst to him, the villain was possessed by Spectral. Hex Spectral. When this portal opens, no one can stop my army from turning the earth into a nightmare, said Spectral possessing Hex's body. Ben Canonbold, in your dreams, Hex Ben said. I say Spider Monkey, get ready, trashy wizard I said, preparing to give Spectral what he deserves, even though he is in Hex's body. Hex Spectral. Die, Tennyson and Sekar Uite Spectral said, and the battle began, without knowing that there was someone watching me and Ben through the well-hidden roof. Spectral used a stove to throw a huge flare at Ben, but I managed to switch it to Wilvin before I hit it, it was a hard battle, and Spectral used Hex magic to regenerate and make the battle more difficult for us by using his staff to throw a gun at us laser beam. Ben and I decided to try a new combo of plants and web, and we managed to disarm Spectral, and I broke Hex's staff in half, and with an attack of Ben's grenade seeds, Spectral and Hex's body was defeated, and we watched as Gwen and Max they came towards us. Ben. Grandpa, Gwen, Issei and I have managed to defeat Hex and thwart his plan. Ben said. Issei. Wait, Ben, something's not right. I said and I saw that Hex fell unconscious to the ground and his body emerged spectral and fled. Ben. Spectral. No wonder it scared me. Ben said when he saw one of his ex-aliens who fled from the Omnitrix. Issei. Yes, and it sucks that he didn't come alone. I said and I heard a voice that I can't believe is here. Rainer. It's been a long time since our last meeting, Issei said the voice that came down from the ceiling, and the person whose voice belonged to it was revealed. Rainer, Issei. No, you can't be here, it's impossible I said when I saw the fallen angel who destroyed my life. Rainer. Come on, Issei, aren't you happy to see me or what? I have waited a long time to have my revenge on you, and it was thanks to a stormy day and an invention of Azazel that you ended up here, and I will finally use my second chance in life to escape to the real world, using your body and so despair and endless torture to the planet Rainer said, preparing a spear of light and approaching me and the Tennyson family. I say. Stay away from them, your revenge is on me, I'm warning you, Rainer I said in rage to the fallen angel who killed me on my first date. Rainer. You warn me. No, I warn you, Issei, in this world your days are numbered and this time Riaz is not here to save you and send me to hell again, Rainer said in a very cruel and threatening tone. Then. 
Isse, what is that black-winged psycho talking about? And what do you mean by the real world? Ben asked, starting to suspect me. Rainer. Wow, it seems you haven't told your little secret to your friends in this world, Isse. Why don't you tell them the truth about you and where you are from? Rainer said making a scar-style threat. Isse. Don't you dare I said to the fallen angel. Max. Isse, what is that woman talking about? Max asked but Rainer revealed the truth. Rainer. You do not exist where Isse and I come from, you are just characters from a cartoon series that he watched in his childhood, and he is a crazy fan. He has all kinds of Ben 10 products in his attic, and I plan to kill so much to Isse as to Ben to facilitate my escape to the real world, where I will use Issei's body to destroy the entire planet, and now I'm going to open a few more portals to turn this world into a living hell. Rainer said, taking out a vacuum projector and said that it was she who opened the San Francisco portal to free Kevin, and that it was just a distraction, and Rainer also revealed that he allied himself with Vilgax and Spectral to conquer the Earth. Max. How did you get a vacuum projector? Explain yourself Max shouted to Rainer. Rainer. I stole it with the help of Spectral, but it was not easy to evade the security system of the plumber's base, I waited for the exact moment to steal the projector, and Spectral managed to deactivate the power of the base, and you already know the rest. Rainer said and she decided to fly away and sow more chaos in the world, while she laughed like a demented psychopath. Max. Issei, you owe us an explanation, now. Max said in an angry tone, and I knew that my secret had been revealed, and we headed to the Mount Rushmore plumbing base, but I know that because of my lies and Rainer's, my friendship with Ben and his family is broken. Rainer has returned to take revenge on me and allied with Vilgax and Spectral and because of him, Ben now hates me for lying to him and now we head to the Mount Rushmore plumbers base to find answers. Chapter 10. Mistrust between friends robbery on Mount Rushmore, obviously, we were in the rust bucket and I saw how Ben and Max didn't talk to me, because Rainer had told them that I came from another world, and that they were just characters in a cartoon series, but the time I spent with them when I got here, it made them look like a secondary family to me, Ben is like a little brother to me, and now he hates me. Wen is the only one who talks to me, and she feels guilty that she had to lie to her cousin and her grandfather, because she trusted her with my secret, and I know I owe them an explanation. Max. Issei, it's time for you to tell us the truth, and by that, I mean the whole truth. Max said in a serious authoritarian tone, and I told everything to the Tennyson family. Issei. Yes, I come from another world and you are characters from a cartoon series that I watched when I was a child, and right now what you are experiencing now and going through is part of the plot of a video game, and I can only return home if I passed all the levels of the game. I said to the Tennysons. Max. How many levels are there? Max asked. Issei. Right now we start level 12, and in total there are 23 levels to pass. I said. When? Another question, who was that girl with black wings that was together with Spectral? She seemed to know you and she sounded like someone evil. Gwen said about Rainer. They say. That was Rainer, a fallen angel and an enemy of my world who believed she was dead. I said. Max. And how is she here if she supposedly died in your world? Max asked. They say. Maybe it has to do with the fact that when the lightning hit the gamer helmet, it not only transported my mind to the game, but also a fragment of Rainer's soul here and now, since he knows that Riaz is not here to save me again, he found a way to escape to the game. Real world using my body to destroy the world and allied with Vilgax and Spectral to get revenge on me. I said about Rainer. Gwen. And why does that Rainer person want to take revenge on you and what does she want? Gwen asked. I say. He's coming for this. I said showing my Boston gear transformed into Omnitrix. Ben. You're Omnitrix. Ben asked, still angry at me. I say. In my world this red Omnitrix is actually called Boosted Gear, and it contains within it Drag, the Welsh Dragon. It is a Longinus class sacred gear capable of killing a god. I said to the Tennysons. Gwen. Impossible, the gods are immortal, they can't die. Gwen said. I say. My sacred gear is in disagreement, the Christian god of my world is dead and with Rainer here the situation worsened. I said. Max. You and Ben have to stop her and Spectral before they find a way to escape to your world and destroy everything, Issei. Max said and we saw Mount Rushmore nearby. On this giant mountain the heads of four presidents of the United States were carved in stone. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln. Incredible to see such an important monument of American history and which is secretly also a base of plumbers on earth. Max. We've arrived. Max said and took out a kind of futuristic key from his pocket, and a door opened, and he took us inside the base, and started looking at the security cameras, in case what Rainer said was true, and that thanks to the help of Spectral, he managed to steal a vacuum projector. Max. It's confirmed. It's clear that someone has stolen a vacuum projector, and the cameras confirmed that it was Rainer who stole it. 
Max said looking at the security cameras and saw that they recorded Rainer stealing the projector. I say. This is all my fault. I said, feeling guilty that Rainer stole the vacuum projector. When? It's not your fault, I say. Spectral used his ability to become intangible to deactivate the security system, and Rainer took over the projector to set a trap for you. Gwen said trying to help me. And? Still, with so much high-tech equipment and you couldn't buy a burglar alarm. What were you thinking about? Ben asked and looking at me with hatred. I say. Ben, that's not relevant now. I said. Ben. I didn't talk to you, you liar Ben said with contempt. Max. That's enough, the plumbers have the best security systems on the planet, it's impossible for something to have escaped from this room without one of these keys said Max showing the key he used to open the plumber's base. I say. Well, the hole in the ceiling says something else. I said, showing the hole in the ceiling that Rainer made to escape from the base. Gwen. And who says something has escaped? Gwen asked and we heard a howl coming from afar, and we knew that he was one of Spectral's werewolves, and if Spectral is here he will also be with the Rainer. Ben. I'll take care of this, Grandpa Ben said and started running. I say. Wait, Ben. I said and we went to a room with three doors, and not only the Spectral monsters came, but also the Vilgax drones. The two. It's hero time the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into XLR8 and Jet Rado fight against the enemies that were there. After beating them we continued and Ben ran away, and I chased him so as not to lose sight of him. We transformed back into humans since our watches had to be recharged. I say. Ben, wait, don't go without me. I said to Ben. Ben. Leave me alone, I say, I don't want to hear from you don't even talk to me. Ben said angrily. I say. Hey, I'm sorry, I wanted to tell you sooner or later, but Rainer being here in the game with me is something I didn't expect. I said, but Ben didn't want to listen to me, and he continued walking to a security beam fence, and Spectral's minions attacked me from all sides, and we ended up on an elevator platform where more Spectral monsters were coming, and Ben used that opportunity to escape through the duct. The vent in his human form and I became big chill to pass intangibly through the wall, and we were outside on Mount Rushmore, and we were above President Lincoln's face, and I saw how Ben transformed into a cannonball and ran away from me. I say big chill, Ben, come back I said, but more spectral minions came to us, and I had to defeat them all on my own, while Ben fled to a ventilation duct in his human form, and after defeating Spectral's minions, I became intangible, and there I was, which in my opinion, one of the most brutal and violent enemies in the game. Victor. I say big chill, Ben, Victor is one of the toughest beings that exist in the world of Spectral I said when I saw Victor, but Ben turned into hell to attack him, but he was no match for the blows that the Transiliano gave, but I froze him, and three others came as reinforcements. Then he blissed, I'm gonna burn Spectral's minions until they're just ashes Ben said, and he brutally attacked the victors, and I saw how he strangled one, but I froze Ben's feet to leave him paralyzed, and after defeating them, Ben managed to unfreeze his feet. Then he blissed, why did you freeze my feet, I say. I've almost beaten them Ben said even more furious with me. I say big chill, if I hadn't saved you from them, they would have broken all the bones in your body I said to Ben, trying to make him see reason. Ben heatless, I didn't ask you to save me, I say, when this is over you'll get out of my life forever, Ben said. I say ice, whatever you want, Ben, but I'm telling you one thing. If Rainer kills both of us and escapes to the real world, it will be all your fault. I said to Ben and we went to a huge room where there were spectral monsters standing guard and we defeated them, and then we heard a sound coming from inside, where there was normally a huge machine to amplify energy, but we saw that it was no longer there, and we saw how Rainer and Spectral were fleeing from the place, and Ben tried to stop the two of them, but Rainer threw a spear of light at him, and just when he was going to hit Ben I got in the middle, and the spear scratched my knee, and I fell wounded to the ground and transformed back into human and Ben tried to stop them, but he came next to me to help me with my injury. Ben. I say, are you okay? Ben asked worriedly. I say. I'm fine, thanks for asking. I said to Ben and he got me up from the ground, and Gwen and Max came in and saw that the machine that Spectral and Rainer stole was missing. Max. Too late, Spectral and Rainer have taken the ethereal amplifier. Max said. I say. Yes, and Rainer threw a spear of light at me that was going towards Ben, but I put myself in the middle to prevent it from hitting him. I said and Gwen also came to my side to help me with my wound. Gwen. You did the right thing, I say. Gwen said. Ben. But what is that amplifier? Some kind of supernatural stereo. Ben asked about the ethereal amplifier. Max. No, it boosts negative energy to dimensional proportions. After adapting it to fit the vacuum projector, the dimensions of the portal that can be created are immeasurable. We have to stop Spectral and Rainer before Vilgax puts his tentacles on that machine. Max said. I say. And if Rainer flees to the real world using my body, we have to put an end to them I said. Gwen. But how do we stop them? Gwen asked. Max. 
In all my years of fighting aliens, the best weapon has always been the same. Information. Max said, taking out a tracker. Max. We'd better get going. It looks like they're heading to the Windy City Max said, watching that Rainer and Spectral were heading to Chicago, and we went back to Rust Bucket so that Gwen could heal my wounds. Ben. Hey, Issei, I'm sorry for acting like an idiot to you before. Ben said apologizing to me. Issei. Don't worry, I don't hold a grudge against you, Ben, what counts now is stopping Spectral and Rainer. I said to Ben. Ben. What else do you know about Rainer, Issei? Ben asked. Issei. Easy, he is a degenerate psychopath and a heartless murderer, and the one who killed me on my first date because she wanted my sacred gear for her evil purposes. I said to Ben and told him that Rhea's reincarnated me as a demon in her nobility and that she was the one who finished off Rainer the first time. Ben. Rhea's is not there to save you like last time, Issei, but I will help you stop her. Ben said. Issei. No, Ben, she's very dangerous and you don't know Rainer like I do, she can kill you in a matter of seconds, no matter what alien form we use. I said to Ben about how dangerous Rainer is. Ben. But we are a team, Issei, and if we fight together nothing will stop us. Ben said and I agreed with him. Issei. Next stop. Chicago Rainer, this time I will defeat you once and for all. I said and I was ready to face the fallen angel that destroyed my life. Ben and I mend our friendship and the Tennyson family trusts me again, but with the containment fields destroyed, aliens are running wild through the Midwest. To make matters worse, Spectral and Rainer have stolen the ethereal amplifier for Vilgax. Ben and I are going to Chicago to avoid it. Chapter 11. The city of monsters on the hunt for Spectral and Rainer. We were driving along the highway that leads to Chicago and we saw said city. I can't believe that city is now as destroyed as it was in the Transformers 3 movie. Dark of the moon, except that what's laying waste to the city now are Spectral's minions instead of the Decepticons. Max parked the rust bucket near the park, and Ben and I were going to head to the train station that was going to take us to the Chicago theater, so that Ben and I could face Spectral and Rainer. But Ben came up with an idea to spend the May prank on Gwen and Max, and I agreed and we transformed into four arms and a human gausaur, and we saw that Max and Gwen were hiding behind a car, and that was our chance to scare them. Max. I think nobody has seen us. Max said. Gwen. Everything is quiet here. Gwen said. Max. Yes, too much. Max said and a thud was heard on the ground. Gwen. What was that? Gwen said and she saw that it was Ben and I like forearms and human gausor. They say human gausor, pick a stays I said. Ben forearms, do you need our help? That. Have we scared you? Ben asked his cousin and his grandfather. Gwen. Not you. Them Gwen said scared. They say human gausor, Ben, look I said and we saw that Fang's nails were coming out of the bushes and one began to roar at us in a threatening manner. Gwen and Max got to safety while Ben and I took care of breaking the bones of the Lobans, and when we continued into the park, more minions came to us, and we defeated them with a brute force combo, it feels good to fight as a team again, with Ben and Smash the villains. Issei Human Gausor, the entire city is filled with Spectral's monster army. We have to find him and Rainer to stop this madness I said to Ben, and he nodded at me, and we arrived at a construction zone, and 10 victors attacked us, and we defeated them with another brute force combo. Ben forearms, those guys don't know when to give up or what. Ben asked annoyed and we climbed the scaffold and we saw a tube to go down like a slide and we arrived near the city bridge and we received a welcome committee and they were more spectral monsters. Ben and I transformed into a canonbolt and a spider monkey to fight them while I attacked the mummies. Ben started to activate the bridge to go to the other side and after three minutes I defeated the mummies and Ben and I continued until they attacked us. The spectral minions but we defeated them with a combo of wade and spider webs and we kept walking and Ben changed to Will Veneto swing like Spider-Man through the city and I stayed as a spider monkey and finally we arrived at the train station but the glass on the roof broke and we ended up on a train where spectral's henchmen attacked us. Before facing the monsters from spectral I switched to Swampfire. I say Swampfire, Ben, this train will take us to the 39th street station. Gwen and Max will wait for us at the entrance of the theater. I said to Ben. Ben Wilveen, let's show them what we're made of Ben said, and we used a combo of fire and plants, and we defeated all of Spectral's minions, and we arrived at the 39th street station, and there were Gwen and Max waiting for us, and after a short walk through the city, we finally arrived at the theater Chicago. I say. Rainer, come out from where you're hiding, I'm waiting for you, I said Pegasus C style before facing Icky. Normal Pov, and the Chimerian Hammer, Vilgax, Spectral, and Rainer are seen finishing installing the ethereal amplifier to the ship to power the void projector that Rainer stole from the Mount Rushmore plumber's base. Vilgax. You have done well, my supernatural allies. Vilgax said to Rainer and Spectral. Rainer. Thank you, Lord Vilgax, Spectral and I were pleased with the result. Rainer said to Vilgax. Vilgax. 
yes, and one good favor deserves another. Vilgax said showing the red and green Omnitrix crystals and gave them to Raynor and Spectral. Spectral. So much power Spectral said when he had the green crystal in his hand. Raynor. This power is fantastic, I feel like I'm reborn, Raynor said with a psychopath smile. Vilgax. Raynor. Yes, and those fools don't know they're about to fall into our lethal trap Raynor said. Spectral. Yes, and the fools think they're hunting us. But the hunters will soon be the hunted Spectral said, and he and Raynor started laughing like the villains they are. Raynor. Issei, very soon I will be free from this video game prison, and I will destroy everyone who opposes me, Raynor said, and she and Spectral teleported to the Chicago theater for their confrontation against Issei and Ben. Issei and Ben do not know that they are heading towards a trap, but their chase takes them to the Chicago theater, where our two heroes will face Raynor and Spectral once and for all. Chapter 12. Issei loses control trying to stop my energumeno friend, of Issei. Ben and I walked inside the Chicago theater and ran into two of our worst enemies. Spectral and Raynor. Raynor. I've waited a long time to have my revenge, Issei, and as soon as I kill you and Tennyson, I will flee back to the real world using your body and spread despair and death to the world, Raynor said. Issei. Not if we can avoid it Ben and I, Raynor said me preparing my Omnitrix. Spectral. Naive, thanks to the energy of your Omnitrix. The bodies I inhabit and Raynor's powers have been increased more than ever, Spectral said. Ben. And your breath too, although that's your minor problem. Ben said mocking the Ectonurite. Raynor. Enough, I've already wasted enough time to chat with the boy I pretended to be in love with, and a nine-year-old brat Raynor said, preparing a spear of light. Ben. I'm ten years old, old, and wear a t-shirt and a skirt, I don't want to be traumatized by seeing your breasts, Ben said insulting Raynor and laughed at her. Raynor. I'm not old, you damn shit brat, I'm still attractive to a lot of men, Raynor said shouting at Ben. Issei. Watch that tongue of yours, Raynor, there are children here. I said to Raynor and Ben and I laughed at her, and Spectral has lost his patience. Spectral. Enough is enough your watches can't save you, Benjamin and Issei. Raynor and I overcome his power and this time, there is no escape Spectral said, and opened a purple portal that distorts the dimensions. Raynor. Tennyson and Hyde you behold the form of your destruction Raynor said, and a fang snail came out, and Spectral possessed it. Issei. Ben, take care of Spectral, I have a score to settle with Raynor once and for all said I, and we transformed into Wilvine and Swampfire to face our respective enemies. Raynor. I've been waiting for this for a long time, die, Issei Hyde you Raynor said, and threw the spear of light at my head and decapitated me. Raynor. One lesson now I'll take care of the other a you you you, who burned my butt. Uranor said when she saw me alive and I kicked her in the face. Issei Swampfire, I'm a plant, Raynor, I can regenerate, and I also have control over fire. I said to the fallen angel and I saw that Spectral broke the floor and that made us fall down to the basement and I changed to human Gaussor to fight Raynor while Ben tries to use the shiny armor to hurt Spectral. Raynor. First you transform into a fire plant with regenerative powers and now you're a dinosaur. It's obvious that you're desperate, Issei Raynor said, throwing spears of light at me every two by three, but I blocked them with a nearby bookshelf. Issei Human Gaussor, nice try, Raynor, but now it's my turn to break your wings I said, and I became big, and I attacked the fallen angel with all my unleashed anger, and I broke both of her wings, and that made her scream in horrible pain that almost left me deaf, and I continued attacking her with some wrestling keys used by wrestlers from WWE, and I must admit that I'm enjoying hurting my enemies, and that fills me with pleasure, oh no I'm becoming sadistic like a Keno, Raynor. Please have mercy Raynor said with fear in her voice, but I ignored her, and in all my anger, I became so big that my human Gaussor skin turned black, and my eyes burned with bloody crimson fury, and I was ready to kill Raynor once and for all. All. Think that he has red eyes and is very angry. They give the furious touch to Issei because now he attacks everyone mercilessly, it doesn't matter if he's friend or enemy. I was so furious that now I attack Raynor without mercy, and the only thing I want is to break her corpse into pieces. I attacked her like a furious bull, and I prepared to tear off both of her wings, and that made her scream in such horrible pain that it distracted Spectral that Ben, like Wilvine, knocked him out, and Max came with a vacuum projector in his hand and sent Spectral straight in the void, but they saw how I attacked Raynor like an energy beast and they tried to stop me, but I pushed them away with my tail, and Gwen saw how I left Raynor and noticed that she is all stained with blood and crying blood from her eyes and asking me to stop, but I didn't stop until I left her dead and broke her corpse into a thousand pieces. After 10 minutes I transformed back into a human and Ben and Gwen tried to stop me, but I violently pushed them away and prepared to suffocate Raynor by sticking my foot into her neck. Then. Issei, stop it, Raynor can't take it anymore, stop Ben said, but I punched him in the stomach and knocked him out. 
Rainer wanted to flee, but all the bones in his body were broken, and he was willing to kill her now, and he couldn't control me or anything, and he was even willing to commit cannibalism before the fallen angel. I say. Now, you will die I said, and just when I was going to give him the final blow with my cannibalistic animal instincts, I fainted to the ground and fell unconscious, and the last thing I saw was Grandpa Max sending Rainer into the void. Third act finished. Avrius, I've seen a lot of things in my life, but seeing a say attacking Rainer like an energy beast is something that will give me nightmares for the rest of my life, it was like seeing him use the juggernaut drive again, but this was even worse, seeing him transformed into such a furious dinosaur and attacking both friend and enemy is something that was difficult to see. Akeno. I'm going to be honest, even though I'm a sadistic girl, this is too much sadism even for me. Akeno said, scared when she saw how Issei was capable of attacking in such a brutal and violent way that it was almost inhuman. Asia. Issei, you're not like that, you're a good person who doesn't want to hurt anyone. Asia said and we saw how Issei woke up screaming like an animal when he saw me. Issei. Riaz, help me it was the only thing he said and he fainted again, but we finally heard him speak, but only for a short time. Arena. Although Humangausaur is an alien that looks like a violent dinosaur, I didn't expect that Issei would use it to attack Rainer in such a brutal way that he would tear off her wings. Irina said upon seeing that Issei, as a Humangausaur, managed to tear off Rainer's wings and break all the bones in her body. Zenovia. That alien scares me so much now. Said Zenovia when seeing how terrifying Humangausaur can be. Roswis. Remind me not to make Issei angry, I want to stay alive. Roswis said, intimidated by seeing what Humangausaur is capable of. Ravel. My brother already became scary because of Drake, but if Issei had transformed into that alien dinosaur in his fight for Riaz, Riser would have already wished he was dead. Ravel said, remembering the fight between Issei and Riser and what Humangausaur is capable of doing to Riser. Pineco. Changing the subject, I have managed to complete the third part of the game, and now it is time for the penultimate part, and we only have eight hours left before Issei's parents return. Kineko said when passing the third part of the game. Azizel. Time is short Kaneko, the penultimate part begins. Azizel said. Serzichas. At least Rainer won't bother us again and run away back to our world. My brother said. Grafia. Still, I have a bad feeling. Grafia said that without us knowing that Vilgax is launching the penultimate phase of his evil plan, and thanks to Rainer, he will want to not only destroy Ben's world, but also ours. Rainer and Spectral have been defeated, but apparently the Omnitrix crystals are being used to obtain DNA. Who could be behind this? Issei and the Tennysons travel south seeking answers to this mystery. Chapter 13. Mutant Civil War Drive. An Imo kidnaps Gwen. Of Issei, I was waking up and I noticed I was in a hospital bed and I saw Ben, Gwen and Max next to me, and they look relieved to see me awake. Issei. Ben, Gwen, Max, what happened to me, where am I? I dreamed that I was breaking Rainer's skull like a human gausor and I fainted in the Chicago theater. I said to the Tennysons. Ben. It wasn't a dream, Issei, it really happened and I have the wounds as proof, you see. Ben said and showed me the wounds I gave him as a human gausor, and I got scared. Issei. Wow, forgive me Ben, I didn't mean to hurt you as a human gausor, but seeing Rainer alive in front of me after so much time, I didn't know what to do except want to kill her by the way, where is Rainer? Did he escape? I asked Max. Max. Don't worry, Issei, I already took care of sending Rainer into the void, along with Spectral, and Gwen managed to get the Omnitrix crystals that contained part of the master control, and we waited for you to wake up so you could integrate your crystal into your Omnitrix. Max said and Gwen gave me the red Omnitrix crystal, and I put it inside the clock, and the semi-master control was activated, now Ben and I can change aliens whenever we want, but we still have the time limit. Issei. Well, thanks to the recovered crystals, we now have access to the semi-control master, but we still don't have access to our other forms. I said and the doctor who treated me came inside and told me that I had been in a coma for four days and saw that I had already recovered and he discharged me to leave the hospital and we went from Chicago to New Orleans and the trip lasted 13 hours and half and to kill time Ben and I played sumo slammers video games and I admit that I had a great time, especially kicking Ben's butt in the game. After a long drive, we finally arrived in New Orleans where there was a reenactment of the American Civil War. Max. Look, guys a historical reenactment of the Civil War. Said Max when watching the American Civil War reenactment. Ben. Boring Ben said. They say. Grow up a little, Ben, a little history never hurt anyone. I said to Ben. When? Yes, and besides, this is the scene of one of the most important battles in our history. Gwen said. Ben. Really? And which side were the space mutants on? Ben asked jokingly. They say, bad timing Ben. I said irritated. When? 
the Civil War took place between the Northern States and the Confederate States, Gwen said, but she was interrupted by screams coming from outside, and we saw strange beings that looked like a cross between a feral and an Iberian lynx, obviously this is the work of Dr. Animo. Ben and I went outside and transformed into XLR8 and Jet Rand, we stumbled upon a strange nest, and out of it came a Dr. Animo mutant that is a cross between a dragonfly and a snake. The snake fly. The say Jet Raya, Ben, that thing looks like a hybrid between dragonfly and native snakes. I said, describing the snake fly and we attacked them with a speed combo, but we destroyed their nest before they spread out infinitely, and we continued the path where even more mutant creatures attacked us, and the next mutant enemy came to us, which is a cross between feral and an Iberian lynx. The feralino. The say Jet Raya, Ben, I detect traces of feral and Iberian lynx DNA on this thing. I said, describing the feralino, and we used another speed combo again, and we beat them, and they continued attacking us with even more of Dr. Animo's mutants along the way, but we beat them using Heatlist and Frigid, and when we went outside more mutants came to us, and there it was a new enemy. The ram snake fly. I say big chill, Ben, it seems that Dr. Animo has made this species even more aggressive. I said, describing the ram snake fly, and we changed again to XLR8 and Jet Rado, defeat the men use a speed combo, and we activated the activation mechanism, and we changed to Wilvin and Swampfire to attack the hordes of enemies that were there, and we continued to a cemetery, and we used XLR8 and Jet Ray again to activate the buttons that activated the secret door to drive. An Imo's secret laboratory and there were more mutants there and we defeated them after 5 minutes of fight and we managed to deactivate the entire laboratory, and that's it Max and Gwen came, and we transformed into humans. Gwen. All mutation experiments point to one man Gwen said. Max. Dr. Animo. Max said. Ben. That monster has my DNA and I want it back Ben said angry upon learning that Dr. Animo used the DNA of his stolen aliens to create mutants. They say. Not only yours Ben, it will also have the DNA of my aliens too, Max, did you see Dr. Animo nearby during the attack? I asked Max. Max. No, I haven't seen it. It could be anywhere. We will have to separate. Gwen, investigate the main laboratory with Issei. Max said and he and Ben went the other way. Issei. Don't worry, Gwen, you're safe with me. I said to Gwen and I'm going to make sure that the degenerate Dr. Animo doesn't kidnap her like in the game. Gwen, thank you Issei. Gwen said, relieved, but a noise was heard, and a robotic gorilla hand came out that knocked me to the ground and took Gwen away. Gwen. Help Gwen shouted, and she was kidnapped by Dr. Animo. Ben and Max. Gwen the two shouted when they saw that Gwen was kidnapped by Dr. Animo. They say. Shit, Gwen, no Ben, Max, forgive me, cheer up caught me by surprise. I said to the two of them. Ben. We have to save her, Grandpa. Ben said worriedly. Max. I say, you played the game, where did encouragement take Gwen? Max asked. Then. She must have taken it to the swamp that is on the outskirts of the city, but for that we have to find Clancy. I said. Then. To the insect tamer, really? Ben asked. Max. He'll know where Gwen and Dr. Animo will be, come on. Max said and we went to La Rust Bucketto go to the swamp where Clancy will be. Dr. Animo has kidnapped Gwen and fled with her to the swamp. Max, Ben and I run desperately after her. But will we arrive in time to save it? Chapter 14. Mutant Swamp on the hunt for Clancy, obviously. Then, Max and I have arrived at the swamp, and when Clancy saw us he started running like the coward that he is. I must admit that for a bug-loving homeless man he runs very fast. They say. Stop, two-legged cockroach I said shouting to Clancy. Max. Clancy, where's Animo? Where's Gwen? Max asked Clancy angrily. Clancy. Ask someone who cares, man Clancy said laughing and disappeared into a curtain of mosquitoes. Max. We have to find Clancy. It's our only hope of finding Gwen. Max said. I say. Yes, before it's too late. I said. Ben. Luckily we brought a fly swatter for big bugs. Ben said and he and I activated our Omnitrix. The two. It's hero time Ben and I said, and we transformed into a Canon Voltenna spider monkey, and a black and fiercer version of the Feralino came to us. The jumping Feralino. I say spider monkey, Ben, these beings are an aberration of nature I said, describing the jumping Feralino, and we started the battle, and more enemies came to us, and we defeated them with a combo of wade and spider webs, and on our way more mutants came to us, but we defeated them without difficulty, and finally we arrived at a house abandoned in the middle of the swamp, and Max was waiting for us, there. Max. I say, Ben, you finally arrived. Max said. I say spider monkey, sorry for the delay, Max, but Dr. Animo's creatures were keeping us busy. I said to Max. Ben Canonald, Clancy's gonna be waiting for us in there, come on. 
Ben said and he and I went inside the abandoned house and found a huge anthill that was hiding a secret entrance, which is where Clancy would be hiding, and we changed to Wildvan and Swampfire, and out of a hole in the wall came Clancy. Clancy. You two are late Gwen's gone, and you'll be next Clancy said, and we started fighting against him, Clancy covered himself in a bug suit so as not to be seriously damaged, but I as Swampfire turned his mosquitoes into ashes, and Ben throwed explosive seeds at him making him lose consciousness when he crashed against a barrel. Max came and saw that he had tied up Clancy with Swampfire pods and we saw how the bug lover woke up and tried to free himself but couldn't. They say. Nice try, Clancy, but the slime pods can withstand even an atomic bomb and are not easy to break free. I said. Max. Okay, worm. I'll ask you soul once, where has encouragement taken Gwen? Max asked Clancy angrily, but he just laughed like an idiot. Clancy. Too late with his new base, the good doctor has all the energy he needs to return this planet to its rightful owners. And, very soon, Gwen Tennyson will be just another being, mixed in among his pool of mutants. Clancy said laughing and me and Max thought about silencing Clancy, but Ben stood in the middle to avoid more violence. Ben. Calm down, Grandpa and Issei. We will save her, I promise. Ben said and we nodded, and when we left a police car was already outside, and the officers took Clancy away in handcuffs, and I noticed that one of the commissioners was reading a newspaper, and in the headline it said that there were mutant monsters attacking the city of New Orleans, and that put Max, Ben and I on alert and we ran back to Rust Bucket and headed towards New Orleans to not only stop the mutants, but also Gwen and Dr. Animo. Clancy has revealed to us that Dr. Animo is building a new base of operations, with Gwen as the main test subject. Me, Ben and Max have little time to save her. Chapter 15. City of Mutants on the Hunt for Dr. Animo. Avise. After leaving the swamp, Ben, Max and I returned to New Orleans and saw how almost the entire city was in ruins, and we saw some people escape from the mutants and the police shooting at them relentlessly, but it didn't hurt them. Ben. All the stations are talking about giant beings destroying New Orleans, do you think that's where the new moot base is? Ben asked Max. Max. No, he'd want something more secluded, but he's probably somewhere nearby. Max said. They say. You're right, Max, Dr. Animo wouldn't be so careless as to expose his secret base. I said and Max parked the rust bucket at the entrance to the city. Max. You two better control those beings while I try to trace the DNA back to its origin. Max said. Ben. I hope we find Gwen soon. She will be indebted to me and in what way Ben said and he and I came out of the rust bucket and transformed into four arms and a human gausor, and the most bloodthirsty and violent mutant in the game came to us. The Crystal Claws. The say human gausor, Ben, this mutant has been created by crossing the DNA of Diamantino, and a grizzly bear and his claws can pass through solid steel, let's avoid them at all costs I said, describing the Crystal Claws and we started the battle and we defeated them with a combo of strength, and more mutants came along the way, and we changed to Canonvolt and Spider Monkey, to get rid of them with a combo of weight in fabrics of spider and we went to a cemetery, and upon entering the mausoleum, and we heard a tremor and we saw how the doors to the mausoleum were closed, and I heard drive. Anima laugh. Cheer up. Now you'll both be trapped said the mad scientist, and left to return to his secret base of operations. Ben Canonbold, he's locked us in Ben said. The say spider monkey, I'll take care of it I said, and I transformed into a human gausor to open the door of the mausoleum, and we saw the entire city destroyed. Ben and I transformed into Heatlist and Big Chill to get out of the cemetery, but there more mutants were waiting for us, but we defeated them with another fire and ice combo without any difficulty, and we continued on our way, and we ended up on top of the ferry, and there were more mutants there, and we changed to Wildvan and Swampfire to confront them, and upon defeating them, we heard how the ferry docked at the port and there Max was waiting for us, and he showed us Dr. Animo's secret base. An old oil platform. They say. I'm glad to see you Max, so that's where Dr. Animo is hiding. I said and Max nodded. Ben. I don't understand. Some of these mutants have arrived from the ocean. Does it make any sense that Animo would have a base there? Ben asked. Max. Clancy said drive. Animo's new base supplied him with energy and I'm sure it's here. Max said. They say. Well, you're not wrong, Max, that's where the plumbers saved the workers from a space squid in 1970. I said. Max. Your information is very useful to us, Issei. Max said. Ben. One question, can the rust bucket navigate through water or not? Ben asked. Max. Are you kidding me? This is an original all-terrain vehicle but, just in case, grab a couple of cubes from the trunk. Said Max and we got to work to make the rust bucket can travel through the water, and I found a few lifeboats in the trunk, and I used Swampfire's powers to tie them to the Tartana's tires and Ben and I were ready to face off to drive. Animo. They say. Hold on, Gwen, we'll save you. I said and we went to the oil platform. The Tennysons and I have detected that Gwen is on an oil platform. 
The time has come for Ben and I to face drive. Animo. Chapter 16. Dual on the oil rig is A and Ben vs Dr. Animo. Avis A. The rust bucket was crossing the ocean and we have finally reached the oil platform where drive. Animo was hiding and where he had Gwen as a hostage and according to Max he also received strange signals from air radio transmission. The rust bucket docked and the three of us went outside and saw the staircase that led up. Ben. Go ahead, my cabin boys, let's bail with the buckets, someone is going to try my twenty knuckles, said Ben getting ready for us to fight drive. Animo. Max. Focus, Ben. We are not on a pleasure trip. This refinery is emitting a kind of subspace transmission. Max said. They say. Maybe Animo is planning to communicate with Vilgax. I said. Max. I'll see if I can track her down while you guys look for Dr. Animo. Max said and the three of us looked up the stairs and I noticed that Ben was a little nervous. They say. Ben, Gwen is counting on us to save her. He needs us and I know we can do it. I said to Ben and he nodded. Ben. Let's go Ben said, and he and I went up the stairs while Max went to the rust bucket o find a different entrance to destroy Dr. Animo's mutant equipment. When we went up to the center of the platform we saw that Gwen was tied with ropes on top of a crane, and just when Ben and I were going to transform, the evil Dr. Animo came in a robotic gorilla suit, holding on to one of the four crushing pistons. Cheer up. You have arrived, perfect you have already seen what I created using the DNA of Tennyson's Omnitrix imagine what I'll do when I have the rest in courage said, and went down to prepare for combat against Ben and I. Ben. In your dreams, cheer up, give me back the DNA of my aliens, and Issei said Ben about to transform. Issei. Ben, don't let yourself be provoked by that scoundrel, let's defeat him like we beat the other villains like before, as a team I said, me too, showing my Omnitrix and we transformed into four arms and human Gaussor and the battle began. The Nimmo started hitting brutally and almost hit Ben if it wasn't me grabbing him by the back so Ben hit him and Nimmo got on the pistons, King Kong style to run away from us, but we used the pistons to our advantage and he lost the balance and we start the action minigame and switch to XLR8 and Jet Rado make him dizzy and send him flying against the piston. The Nimmo got up, but I as Jet Ray launched a laser beam from my eyes to damage one of his gorilla feet and Ben as XLR8 used fast attacks to make him desperate and that made Nimmo repeat the same move as before, betting on the crushing pistons like King Kong and run away, but I didn't consider that we used fast aliens and when I touched the button under the pistons he fell to the ground again and Ben and I switched to Heat List and Big Chill to start the second action minigame. The Nimmo tried to he threw a barrel at us, but Ben destroyed it with a flare and I used Frost's ghost powers and destroyed the right leg of an Animo's robotic gorilla suit. Ben and I used the fire and ice combo to seriously damage Dr. Animo's robotic suit, and we saw that black smoke came out of him, and that was a sign that he was going to explode, and he came back up like King Kong, and we used the piston button to make him lose his balance and we changed again to forearms and human gaussor to beat up drive. Animo. Ben punched Animo in the face, and I bent the arms of the robotic gorilla suit, and Ben and I threw Dr. Animo to the bottom of the sea, and we saw that he fled by swimming but the police were already there waiting to arrest him, and I became giant to free Gwen from the crane, and here Max came. Max. Gwen Max said when he saw his granddaughter safe and sound. Gwen. Grandpa Ben is say Gwen said and hugged us. Ben. I see you've managed not to turn into a horrible mutant monster almost. Ben said mocking Gwen. Gwen. Too bad I can't say the same about you. Gwen said mocking Ben. They say. What counts now is that you're okay, Gwen. I said to Gwen. Gwen. At least one has worried about me. Gwen said. Max. What the hell was Animo doing with a satellite communicator? Max asked. Gwen. Talk to Vilgax. Apparently, he and his spirit are on her list of colleagues Octopus Face is in Earth's orbit right now. Has planned to suck the entire planet into the void said Gwen revealing Vilgax's evil plan. They say. Not if the four of us can avoid it I said. Max. Not this time, this time we're going to need help and a lot of it. Come on, let's go to Washington DC said Max suggesting that we go towards the capital of the United States. Ben. Cool when we get there, do you think they could pass a law to prohibit you from entering the kitchen? Said Ben and we noticed that our Omnitrix started to shine and that was the sign that master control has been re-established in our Omnitrix, now there is no time limit on our transformations. They say. Ben, now we have re-established master control on our watches, now we can face Vilgax with full power I said, and just when we got down I fainted and fell down the stairs, and the Tennysons took me inside the rust bucket and I had never felt weaker than before. Fourth act finished. Avrius, we saw Issei faint on the screen, and that means he was about to wake up and then faint again, and I noticed that Issei had woken up screaming. Issei. Riaz, help me, I need you Issei said, and then he became unconscious again, but I noticed that he was about to return to his body. Rias. Issei, hold on, there are only three levels left until you come back to us, my beloved. 
I said to the boy I love. Akeno. We don't have much time left, we only have one hour for Kaneko to complete the entire game before Issei's parents come home. Said Akeno and we noticed how Issei's pulse was warming up and maybe it was a sign that we have almost finished the game. Kaneko. Good news, I have already reached the final part of the game, the bad thing is that we only have one hour left before Issei can return to his body oh Kaneko said, but he started to complain about the pain in his wrist, and Asia went to his side and told us something that scared us. Asia. Oh no, Kaneko has damaged her wrist, I don't know if she can play anymore. Asia said and that was the worst news that can be given to us at this moment. Zenovia. Now what are we going to do? Zenovia asked desperately. Irina. I don't know if I'm capable, I always played YA games when she was little. Irina said. Roswis. If Kaneko can't continue playing, who will now? Roswis asked desperately. Leave it to me. Said a voice that was very familiar to us, and we noticed who it was. Ball. Volley. Apparently Kaneko has damaged her wrist, and now Volley comes along with a Gremarine ability. Will Volley be the last hope to bring Issei back to the real world, or will Issei die at the hands of the diabolical Vilgax? The final battle is about to begin. Chapter 17. Void portals in Washington, D.C. Can Volley save Issei? Avrius, I can't believe it, it's Volley, the hacker Yuko and bearer of the vanishing dragon Albion, but what is he doing here, and how did he find us? Rias. What are you doing here, Volley? If you are looking for a fight, it is not possible, Issei is unconscious. I said to the white-haired man. Bali. I already know, Azizel warned me about what has happened, and I see that you are playing Ben 10 Protector of Earth, and that you are already in the last three levels. Bali said. Akeno. Kaneko injured a wrist and maybe you can help Issei but we only have 50 minutes before Issei's parents come home. Said Akeno Al Hacker Yuko. Albion. I didn't expect your wielder to be a lightning rod, Drake. Albion said to Drake. Drake. Now is not the time for laughter, Albion, we have to save Issei. Volley, although I don't usually say that to the Albion wielder, but we need your help, and you could be my companion's last hope. Drake said to Volley. Volley. I'll help you, I don't want to see Issei trapped in a video game because of Azazel's failed invention either. Volley said and sat in Issei's gaming chair and took the controller, and we saw how he went to the game options menu and changed the difficulty from normal to hero, which I think is the difficult mode. Hineko. Why have you changed the difficulty of the game? Kaneko asked. Bali. Because I was already expecting that Issei would play in normal mode, so I upped the ante to the hero difficulty to have even more fun. Bali said. Arena. For God's sake, that's evil even for you, Bali Lucifer Arena said irritated. Albion. Let's not waste any more time, let the game begin, Albion said, and Bali started the penultimate level of the game, without knowing that Issei's unconscious body is moving. Avise, I was waking up and noticed the Tennyson family was looking at me with concern and I noticed my head was bandaged. Issei. Oh, my head, what happened to me? I asked the Tennysons. Max. You fainted when lowering the oil platform after the battle against Dr. Animo, and you were unconscious for a couple of days, and not only that. Max said. Issei. How come not just that? I asked and I noticed that my hand is disappearing and I started to get scared, and that makes me feel like Marty McFly from Back to the Future. When? Issei, your hand is disappearing, Gwen said when she saw that my hand was disappearing. Ben. Issei, could it be that your body in the real world is waking up, and that's why you're disappearing? Ben said and he will be right that my body will already be waking up, and that my time in Ben's world will be coming to an end, and that very soon I will have to say goodbye to the Tennyson family. Issei. It seems my time here is coming to an end, and I must return to the real world, but first we must stop Vilgax before he begins the last phase of his evil plan. I said and we sat down in our places in the rust bucket ahead to Washington DC. Max. Shit, void energy levels are raising everywhere. Apparently a large door has opened on the National Mall. Max said when he saw that there were several void portals in Washington. Gwen. Should we stop? We have to get to Washington Gwen said. Issei. Gwen, calm down, Ben and I have taken care of it. I said to Gwen. Max. Issei, you should better stay here, who knows if you end up disappearing altogether. Max said. Issei, don't worry, let's go Ben. I said to Ben and we went to the monument of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, and there were Vilgax's robots and Ben and I transformed into XLR8 and Jet Rand, we beat them with a speed combo, and we continued on our way, and I noticed that the enemies in the game were now more difficult to defeat than before, it's like they changed the difficulty of the game to hero mode. Then XLR8, Issei, is it just me or is it that Vilgax's robots are now more brutal than before? Ben said about enemies are tougher now. Issei Jet Raya, yes, it's like they changed the difficulty of the game to hero mode, which is the hard mode. 
I said to Ben while I avoided a void portal, and we heard that a door of a spaceship opened, and another very brutal enemy came out of it. A Detroitite, a Sage at Raya, Detrovitas these guys are as strong as they are ugly. I said, describing the species of Vulcanus and we started to fight against him, and then more Detrovites came, but we beat them with another speed combo, and now I must admit that someone has changed the difficulty of the game to hero mode, and that the villains fight without piety. After defeating them we entered one of the ships, and after 10 minutes Ben and I came out like a canonbolt and a spider monkey, and outside more enemies were waiting for us, but we defeated them with a combo of wade and spider webs, and we looked at the destruction that there were more enemies around, and there were more enemies, and we defeated them without any difficulty, and also avoiding the void portals and we had reached the roof of the White House, and there were not only more enemies, but like hundreds of void portals throughout the city. But now we it was time to fight Vilgax's minions, and we defeated them all with a combo of Wade and spider webs. After the battle, we returned to La Rust Bucket and Max and Gwen were waiting for us with bad news. Gwen. Come up, quick Gwen said, and we went inside. I say. We got rid of Vilgax's minions, and there were like 100 void portals out there I said. Max. Not only that, all communications are cut off. It is now impossible to get official assistance for this. Max said. Gwen. But how can we reach Vilgax in space without the help of the government? Gwen asked. I say. I have an idea but I don't know if you like it. I said. Gwen. And what idea is it? Gwen asked and Ben took me at my word. Ben. We could go steal some rockets from Cape Canaveral. Given the circumstances, I don't see why they would care. Ben said my idea. Gwen. I expected that idea from Ben, but from you, I say, you two know very well that we can't break into a highly guarded space launch facility, and Grandpa. Gwen asked when she noticed that Max started to touch the pedal of the rust bucket and the speed counter is at 140 kmh. Ben. Issei, you're disappearing again, Ben said when he saw me disappear again. Issei. Cape Canaveral is the penultimate level, we are approaching the end of the game, and I will disappear again to my world. I said while my body manifested itself again and I thought I heard Rhea's voice in my mind. The openings of the void portals have plunged the country into chaos and not only that, I am about to return to the real world. The Tennysons and I headed to Cape Canaveral to prepare for the trip to Vilgax's spaceship. Chapter 18. Bounty Hunter at Cape Canaveral Let's Get You, Vilgax. Avise. Max was driving like a reckless driver and ignoring the traffic around and we managed to get to Cape Canaveral by breaking through the front door like there was nothing and not only that, the entire parking lot was empty. Avise. There is no one I said. Gwen. I can't believe this is abandoned. Gwen said when she saw Cape Canaveral empty like a ghost town. Max. Most of them have probably gone home to their families we have to get to the experimental propulsion laboratories. Max said. Ben. Quick right said Ben and Max parked in one of the parking lots, and Ben and I left the rust bucket and entered into Cape Canaveral, and upon entering we were attacked by Vilgax's minions, but Ben and I transformed into a canonbolt and a spider monkey to finish off. They. But as we continued on our path, more robots and detrovitas came to us so we could break their circuits. Then Ben and I transformed into XLR8 and Jet Rado defeat them with a speed combo. They say Jet Raya, Ben, we must be careful. 6x and other mercenaries are here to prevent us from finding the rockets. I said to Ben. Then XLR8, we need those rockets to go after Vilgax and recover the Omnitrix crystals. Said Ben and now we got a more violent and brutal version of the Detroitites. The crazy Detroitite. They say Jet Raya, Ben, the strongest Detrovites have honed their prowess on the galactic battlefield. I said, describing the crazy Detrovita, and he tried to impale us with his drill, but we defeated him without any difficulty, and as we continued along the path there were even more enemies around the place, and we had to change to Wildvan and Swampfire to face them and defeat them with a combo of Lance and Fire and finally we came to the Experimental Propulsion Laboratory, but there were no rockets there, surely 6 told them but more enemies came there, but we defeated them without any difficulty, and apparently they were the last enemies of the level and of the game. Ben and I deactivated the mechanisms of the rockets that were guarding the place where 6x was, and when we reached the rockets, there was the bounty hunter Sodragiano 6x, and insulting me and Ben in his alien language. Ben and I switched to Canonbolt and Spider Monkey to start the battle against the penultimate boss of the game. 6x tried to cut us with his energy disc, but I hit his hands with my spider web and Ben made sure to hit 6x in the face, but the bounty hunter decided to fly away, but I stopped him and Ben, and I defeated him with a weight combo and spider webs. We transformed into four arms and human gaussor to recover the rockets that 6x had stolen and brought them to Gwen and Max to use in the Tartana. Issei. Max, Gwen, we're back. I said. Ben. Issei and I have found the rockets. Ben said. Gwen. And now? Gwen asked. Max. Bring me my welding helmet. 
Max, Ed and Ben went to the glove compartment to get Max's welding helmet to equip the rockets to the rust bucket and Max took it and started welding. Gwen. Is say, you're disappearing again Gwen said scared when she saw me disappear, but now it's worse. Ben. Is say, this is going to be the last level of the game, right? Sad Ben asked. Is say, yes and my time is running out. Once we defeat Vilgax, I will disappear to the real world. I said to Ben and Gwen and they hugged me with tears in their eyes. Gwen. We don't want you to go Gwen said crying. Ben. It wouldn't be the same without you. Ben said crying. I say. I don't want to leave either, but my friends and family are very worried about me, and I know I should return. I said to Ben and Gwen, but then I started hearing Rhea's voice again. Rhea's. I say, please wake up, open your eyes, go back to the real world, Rhea's voice said in my mind, and apparently only I could hear it. I say. Rhea's I said and I noticed that Max has finished installing the rockets to the rust bucket and we get on it to go into space and fight against Vilgax, and we notice how the sky has turned purple because of the hundreds of void portals throughout the country. I say. My adventure in Ben's world may be coming to an end, but I won't go home without first defeating Vilgax. Rhea's, I know you're not with me here now, but you're with me in spirit and everyone else is too, and I know I can beat Vilgax alongside Ben. I said and at last we reached the Chimerian Hammer, now the final battle will begin. But the rust bucket brimmed with experimental rocket engines, the Tennysons and I headed into space for our final showdown with Vilgax. Final chapter. Final battle against Vilgax A sad emotional farewell. Avrias. Bali finally reached the final level of the game and we only have 10 minutes left before Issei's parents return. Rias. I hope Issei heard me. I said. The Keno. Believe me, Rias, with you by his side, there is no doubt that Issei heard you and that he will return to us. Okeno said. Asia. Well, at least I managed to heal Issei's wounds, but Kaneko's will take a while. Asia said. Kaneko. Yes, but we don't have much time left, Issei's parents will return any moment, Bali, finish the last level, Hurry Kaneko said. Bali. I'm already on it, let's play the last level and save Issei. Bali said and pressed the screen of the final level of Ben 10 Protector of Earth. Arena. You are our last hope, Bali, save Issei. Irina said. Zenovia. Hurry, time is running out. Said Zenovia and the final level has begun. Ah, Issei, the Tennysons and I were traveling through space and we finally arrived at our destination. The Chimerian Hammer, Vilgax's ship. It is a sign that the final battle will take place here. Issei. We finally reached the heart of evil. I said upon reaching the Chimerian Hammer. Then. Still, this is a stealth trip, Grandpa Ben said, and we left the rust bucket and headed straight towards the wolf's mouth. They say. This is no time for jokes, Ben, we just got into the mouth of the wolf, but I think our flight was too easy. I said to the Tennysons. Max. You're right, I say, it was too easy, but we don't have time to worry about it. Ben, I say, keep Vilgax busy while Gwen and I destroy the void projector. Max said and Ben and I transformed into forearms and human gaussor. I say human gaussor, human gaussor, then forearms, forearms, when? Even on Vilgax's ship you have to shout the names of the aliens like a couple of mentally retarded people. Gwen said. Then forearms, and don't worry, Grandpa, I say and I will make sure Octopus Face has his hands full Ben said, and while Gwen and Max went to the control room to destroy the vacuum projector, Ben and I went to the place where Vilgax was, and I noticed that Ben was somewhat depressed. I say human gaussor, Ben, I know that this is not only the final battle, but also that I will no longer be here traveling with you, but don't forget that I will never forget you, Gwen and Max. I said to Ben. Then forearms, it's not that, I say, in the time that you and I have spent together defeating villains, you became my best friend, and it won't be the same without you, and I will miss you. Ben said about how he's going to miss me a lot. I say human gaussor, I'll miss you too, and I'll tell my friends everything we've been through. I said to Ben and we bumped fists like good friends. Then forearms, ready to kick Vilgax's ass. Ben said. I say human gaussor, only if you let me turn him into sushi. I said and we went to the area where Vilgax was. For the epic touch of the final battle, it was a long and hard road, after defeating several enemies with Ben. Retrieving Omnitrix crystals and defeating powerful bosses and facing my past, it's time to face Vilgax and beat the game and return home, although leaving this world doesn't mean that I'm going to forget the memories and friends I made in this world. Now yes, it's all or nothing and before us was not only the Void Projector, but also the final boss more evil and cruel than the Beast of the Apocalypse Trahixa. Vilgax. Vilgax. Finally, Tennyson, you stand before me on my ship and not only you, but also the boy who destroyed Raynor, we finally meet face to face, Issei Haidu Vilgax said in his typical cruel and evil tone. Issei human gaussor, I'm not happy either to see a sushi plate with arms and legs like you, squid face I said to the alien despot. Ben forearms, give up or else we're going to turn you into fried squid, Ben said to his archenemy. Vilgax. 
I'm afraid I won't, my plan has just reached its final phase, and very soon when I send the earth into the void, I will also send the earth of your world into the void, and there will be no one who will stop me Vilgax said. Then four arms, not if Issei and I avoid it, Ben said. Issei human Gausor, and we won't let you get away with it I said to Vilgax. Vilgax. You fools, do you think you can defeat me? Besides, it's too late to stop now and you can behold how I shape the universe with my own design. First I will destroy the Tennysons and the Sekiruite, then I will erase all traces of your worlds from the eternal layer of time and space Vilgax said, and he became giant with a ray of a machine, and Ben and I became XLR8 and Jet Rado start the final battle. The XLR8 gave Vilgax fast kicks and I as Jet Ray I launched laser beams at him from my eyes, and with each attack Vilgax returns more or less to his normal size, and after 5 minutes of intense battle Vilgax returned to his normal size and fled back to the machine to become big, but Ben and I avoided it by deactivating the buttons of the machine, and we began the first part of the action minigame in which we switched to four arms and human Gausor to beat Vilgax in a Chinese pulse, Vilgax almost had us defeated, but he didn't have the strength of a human Gausor. He was going to give us the lead, we beat him, and he crashed into the devices that powered his growth machine, and they were destroyed, and ramps for the Kanonvolt came out of them, and I turned us into Kanonvolt and Spider Monkey. They begin the second assault and we saw how Vilgax started to float in the air. They say Spider Monkey, Vilgax doesn't know when to surrender or what. I said. Then Kanonvolt, be careful, it can attack us from the air. Ben said and used the ramp to attack Vilgax from above, while I used my spider webs to block his view, and after another 5 minutes Vilgax fell to the ground, and Ben and I started the second part of the action minigame, and we became an heatless and big chill and Vilgax launched a laser beam at us from his hand, but we used our fire and ice combo against him and he crashed against the ramps and grappling plants were released for Wilvin and now it was the final phase of the fight against Vilgax and Ben and I we transformed into Wilvin and Swampfire to avoid being hit by Vilgax's energy arrays, and we we attacked him with seed grenades and fireballs to damage him and we managed to make him fall to the ground with a combo of plants and fire and we started the last action minigame and we switched to four arms and human Gausor to smack Vilgax all over the face and then switched to Kanonvolt and Monkey and attacked him with quick attacks from XLR8 and Jet Ray laser beams so that Vilgax could grab us in the hands and then he was at he was about to vomit because he smelled swamp fire and that made him let his guard down to receive an attack of spikes from Wilvin and we lurked behind Vilgax to hit him with a fireball from Heatlist and an ice storm from Frigid, Vilgax. He was almost defeated, and Ben and I turned back into our human forms to catapult Vilgax into space. Ben tried to stop him but he didn't realize that he was grabbed by Vilgax, and I pressed a button to open the airlock and that sucked Vilgax into outer space, and I grabbed Ben so he won't end up in space too. Vilgax. I curse you, Ben Tennyson and Issei Haidu Vilgax shouted engulfed and was catapulted out of his ship. Issei and Ben. We did it Ben and I shouted celebrating our victory against Vilgax, and then I fell tired to the ground and noticed how my body was disappearing again, but this time I'm going to disappear completely. Ben. Issei, get up, come on, we still have to recover the rest of our Omnitrix. Ben said, but I had no strength left to get up until Max and Gwen came and lifted me up, and we noticed that 12 Omnitrix crystals came out of the vacuum projector, 6 green and 6 red. Issei. Is that what I think it is? Very weak me asked. Ben. Yes, it's the remains of the Omnitrix we'll finally be whole again, Issei and I Ben said, and picked me up to go towards the Omnitrix crystals. Max. Watch out, Ben and Issei that void energy is incredibly dangerous Ben said, and just when he approached the crystals and we recovered the crystals from the Omnitrix, but an explosion was heard that was just coming from the vacuum projector. Issei. Oh no, I don't like this at all I said worried. When. The void projector causes instability. Without the Omnitrix crystals, it can't hold that much energy. We have to get out of here Gwen said, and we fled back towards the rust bucket and we ran away from Vilgax's ship, and from behind we saw Vilgax being sucked into a giant void portal from his ship. Vilgax. No, this is the last thing anyone heard from Vilgax, and the portal to the void was completely closed. Issei an emotional farewell to Issei. Issei. We won't hear from Vilgax again for another five years. I said, very weak and about to disappear, and I noticed that we returned to the Grand Canyon, the place where my adventure with the Tennysons has begun. Ben. Issei, do you recognize where we are? Ben asked and I nodded yes. Issei. Yes, that's where we met and where my adventure as the wielder of the Omnitrix began. I said and Max and Gwen carried me out to see the views at sunset. Gwen. Are you okay now, Issei? Gwen asked and noticed how my body is leaving this world. Ben. My time is up, I must return to my world. I said. I finally find the boy with the red Omnitrix, and I see that he's already leaving. Said a voice that I know very well who it was. Asmuth, the creator of the Omnitrix. Ben. 
Asmuth Ben said upon seeing the creator of the Omnitrex. Asmuth. I'm glad to see you, Ben Tennyson, and I finally meet the Sekar Uite and wielder of the Red Omnitrix Issei Haidu. Asmuth said. Issei. It's an honor to meet you, Asmuth. I said to the creator of the Omnitrix, but he noticed how I disappeared from this world. Asmuth. Issei Haidu, you don't have much time left, you must say goodbye. Asmuth said, and he removed the Red Omnitrix from my wrist and gave it to Max. Max. Issei, say hello to your friends from my part in your world, and show them my recipes too, and I promise you that I will take care of your Omnitrix. Said Max saying goodbye to me. Issei, I'll do it Max. I said and then Gwen hugged me crying. Gwen. I will never forget you, Issei, take care of yourself. Gwen said crying. Issei. I will, Gwen. I said to Gwen and finally Ben comes and he is the person I will miss the most in this world. Ben. I can't believe the boy we found lying on the street ends up becoming my best friend I don't want you to go, Issei Ben said crying and hugging me. Issei. I don't want to leave either, but my friends and family need me, and as a farewell gift I will give you a very special alien. I said and I touched Ben's Omnitrix and transformed it into a black alien with golden wire tips and a green eye. Feedback. Ben feedback, wow, what alien is that? Ben asked, having transformed for the first time into feedback, which is personally one of my favorite aliens. Asmuth. A conductoid but how did you know the unlock code for the conductoid shape? Asmuth asked about how I managed to unlock feedback. Issei. I turned the clock a few times and that's it, I hope you like feedback, Ben. I said to Ben and he nodded. Ben feedback, goodbye, Issei, I hope we meet again. Ben said and shook my hand and in the end my entire body disappeared back into my world. Issei. Goodbye I said and I noticed how my mind returned to my body, and I opened my eyes, and I saw my girls, especially Rias, and I saw that they had tears of joy in their eyes, and they hugged me. Rias. Issei Rias shouted with tears in her eyes and hugged me when she knew I was back. Issei. I'm back, I'm here. I said to my harem and I removed the gamer helmet from my head, and I noticed that Bali was sitting in my gaming chair and watching the final scene of the game where Vilgax swore revenge, and that he was going to return, and Kaneko had a damaged wrist. The Keno. Issei, if you're wondering why Vali is here and why Kaneko has an injured hand, we'll explain it to you above. Akeno said and I saw how Vali left through a portal and gave me a goodbye gesture, and we left the gaming room, and I heard my parents enter, and I welcomed them home, and I told my harem girls everything that had happened to me inside the game. Asia. You became friends with Ben 10, incredible. Asia said. Kaneko. I hope you haven't done anything of your own, Issei. Kaneko said. Arena. I doubt it, Ben 10 has always been Issei's idol throughout his life. Irina said. Zenovia. What envy, I would have loved to fight alongside Issei and Ben against the villains from outer space. Zenovia said. Ravel. But first we must get rid of the cause of our problems. Ravel said, taking out the gamer helmet. Roswis. Yes, that helmet will be destroyed immediately Roswis said, taking out a hammer and about to destroy the helmet, but I stopped her. Issei. No, if there is anyone who is going to destroy the gamer helmet, it will be me. I told the girls and I went to the garage to destroy the gamer helmet, but since there was no one around, I took a transparent plastic box from the shed and kept the gamer helmet inside so I could bury the box under the ground and marked exactly where. The box and the gamer helmet were buried so that I can use it in the future without anyone using it except me. I went back inside and went to dinner and went to bed dreaming that one day I could use the Omnitrix again with Ben. Of Serzich's, I came home after Issei returned to the real world, and Grafia warned me that there is someone who wants to talk to me. I went to my office and a black-haired man wearing a lab coat was waiting for me. Paradox. Lord Serzich's, an honor to meet you in person. Said Professor Paradox. Serzich's. What were you thinking, Paradox? Issei ended up hit by lightning because of you, that wasn't part of the deal you know. I said. Paradox. Issei Haidu already returned to his body but very soon he will have to unearth the gamer helmet to help Ben Tennyson against the threat of the Supremes. Paradox said and left back to Ben's world. Serzich's. What exactly are you plotting, Paradox? I said and left my office to be with my family. It turns out that the lightning storm was orchestrated by Professor Paradox and that Issei must once again use the gamer helmet to help Ben against the future threat that he will come. The sequel will continue this Hiatoria. Extra Chapter. Escape from the void redemption of a fallen angel, of Rainer, dear diary, because of that damn old man Max Tennyson, I am trapped in the void prison, and every day is hell over and over again, all the guards are sons of bitches, and the worst of all is Morg, who always harasses me hexwell way, and it makes me want to vomit just by looking at it. If there's something I hate more than guards and prisoners, it's a say hi do for breaking every bone in my body and ripping off my wings in Chicago, but the stunned pervert doesn't know that we fallen angels can regenerate our wings even if it takes us a good time time. 
I know that one day I will escape from this den, and I will not allow anyone to ruin my escape and my revenge. I was in the courtyard leaning my back against the prison wall and thinking how I would achieve my escape until I heard noises of fighting from there and saw that there were several prisoners fighting a monster with alien parts, some of those parts I recognized from the aliens. What that damn kid Tennyson used. Kevin. Nobody touch me, can you hear me? Come here if you have guts Kevin said while he threw a prisoner into the wall where I was. Rainer. Hey, you, Levin, you almost killed me, you know. I said irritated. Kevin. Get off, Raven Wings, you're in my way Kevin said. Rainer. Are you looking for a fight? Come on, fight, coward I said, preparing a spear of light and Kevin and I fight to the death, without knowing that we are being watched by two prisoners. Fifteen and Quarrel. Fifteen. Those two are very fighters, right? Quince asked Quarrel. Quarrel. They're very angry, I understand that. Quarrel said and stood up to where Kevin and I are. Quarrel. Enough, both of you, calm down. Quarrel said. Kevin. Make me Kevin said he was about to beat up Quarrel. Quarrel. Whatever you want. Quarrel said and grabbed Kevin's heapless fist and threw him back against the ground. Rainer. Levin, you're a damn weakling, you're a dead man, man I said, about to stick my spear of light into Quarrel, but he took it away from me and he broke it in half with his leg. Quarrel. Guns are for cowards, you're still very immature. Quarrel said and he did the same thing to me as he did to Kevin and he knocked me to the ground. Quarrel. My name is Quarrel, when you are ready to leave your anger behind, you will know where to find me. Quarrel said and went back to 15. Kevin and I after a few hours decided to accept Quarrel's offer to leave our anger behind. Kevin. We need help. Kevin said. Rainer. Quarrel, I think you're the only one who can help us. I said and he put his hands on our shoulders. Quarrel. You just had to ask me. Said Quarrel and for months, Kevin and I were under Quarrel's tutelage, and thanks to him, Kevin left his alien chimera form behind and returned to his 11-year-old human boy form. In my case, I didn't want to use my human form because it only brings back painful memories of how I heard a say and that I killed him on our date, which I must admit, I enjoyed it a lot and that he really was in love with me and I, I thanked him by killing him with a spear of light and the only thing I have as a memory of him is the bracelet he gave me and it was worse when I was reincarnated into a video game and I allied myself with Vilgax and Spectral to take revenge on his say and return to the real world. For God's sake, I'm worse than Kakabiel. Quarrel. Rainer, you can tell that what you did to be here was something horrible, I understand you, I did horrible things too. Quarrel said trying to comfort me. Rainer. You have no idea about the atrocities I committed, don't try to reduce yourself to my level, Quarrel. I said to Quarrel. Quarrel. Killing someone you once thought you loved is something I understand very well. Quarrel said and he told me that he once killed his wife and her children because of some men who threatened to kill him if he didn't do what they were told and that because of them he ended up in the void for murdering them without mercy. Dot. Brainer. I can't believe you did something so horrible and it's similar to what I went through. I said, releasing tears and Quarrel hugged me to comfort me. Quarrel. What matters now is that you must leave your anger and emotional pain behind and learn to forgive yourself. Said Quarrel and like Kevin, I reverted to my human form of Uumelmano. Author's note. From now on, Rainer will use the name Uumelmano for the rest of the chapter and for the sequels. Uma, thank you Quarrel. I said, and over the next few weeks Quarrel taught Kevin how to absorb matter, like concrete, instead of energy, so he wouldn't go crazy with power like before. He taught me how to use my fallen angel powers for good, and he gave me hand-to-hand -hand combat classes to defend myself, and I must admit that I do it well. Quarrel. There is nothing more I can teach you too, you no longer belong here. Quarrel said. Kevin. Let's know how we escape. Kevin said. Uma. Kevin's right, this place is like a fortress, it's impossible to escape from here. I said. Quarrel. Listen, I've been working on a way to escape from this place, if you want, the three of us can go together. Quarrel said. Kevin. Anytime. Kevin said. Uma. I have the perfect idea, start a riot in the prison yard to distract the guards and facilitate our escape. I told Kevin and Quarrel my idea, and they agreed that it was a good idea, without knowing that Morg, the guard who has a tendency to hexily harass me and who hated Quarrel like the plague, was on patrol in the courtyard and heard about my plan of escape. Four hours later, Quinn suggested that he start a mutiny in the prison with truck and they fraud against anyone who came in their way, both prisoners and guards, and that was the perfect distraction to escape. Quarrel. Come with me, I've been digging this secret tunnel for years, the time has come to use it. Quarrel said showing us his escape tunnel, and we went down where the mines were, and just when we thought we smelled the sweet smell of freedom, Morg came. Morg. Are you guys going somewhere? Morg asked. Quarrel. Morg Quarrel said with contempt. Uma. What are you doing here? I said to the guard who tried to grape me every day. Morg. It took you three, I found your tunnel months ago. 
nice try, what a pity that the three of you ended up vaporized trying to escape AHHH Morg said, but Quarrel attacked him and disarmed him of his blaster, and Kevin and I could only watch as Quarrel tried to stop Morg from killing us. Kevin. Quarrel. Kevin asked scared. Quarrel. Forget about me, guys, run away as fast as you and Yuma can. Quarrel said holding Morg back. Rainer. We won't leave without you, Quarrel I said, crying and not wanting my father figure to die at the hands of the scoundrel Morg. Quarrel. Don't argue, run away Quarrel said, and Kevin and I listened to him and escaped from the void jail, not knowing that Morg grabbed the blaster he dropped earlier and shot Quarrel in the chest, killing him in the process. Kevin and I found our way out of the tunnel and cried for the loss of our father figure Quarrel. I swear that one day I will kill Morg for what he has done, and even if it is the last thing he does in his life. I consoled Kevin that Morg killed Quarrel, but let that murderer know that this is not the last time he has seen Kevin and me, and that I will finish him off. It took us a few hours to find the void portal that will take us back. The earth and we made it and I saw that we were in a city, and the sign that said the name of the city Bellwood. The Uma. Quarrel, I will take advantage of my second chance in life for the better, and I know that although you are no longer with me and Kevin, you will always live in my heart, I will never forget you. I said and I said goodbye to Kevin and decided to start a new life in Bellwood. Five years later. I've been, it's been five years since my adventure with Grandpa Max and my cousin Gwen, also since my best friend Issei Haidu left my world to return to his own, and Grandpa Max entrusted me with Issei's red Omnitrix to keep. Grandpa and Asmuth managed to remove the Omnitrix from my wrist after losing my favorite alien feedback, which is the only thing that reminds me of Issei before he left, because of malware, and because I believed I could beat him with an alien that had a disadvantage against him. Well, back to the topic, I was riding my bike after a soccer game, and I was on my way to see Grandpa Max, and I saw that everything was dark and messy like a tornado had come in, and I noticed that the toilet light was on. And behind me was an alien I had never seen before. The alien tried to attack me with its tentacles and I tried to transform but I forgot that I was no longer wearing the Omnitrix, and I grabbed the fire extinguisher that was under the table, and I sneaked behind it and hid it with the foam from the fire extinguisher, and I sent it flying and breaking through rust bucket window accident. Then. I know you were looking for that thing, Grandpa, but what? I asked myself that and the only thing I found was a hollow message from Grandpa Max. Max recording hi Ben. Said Grandpa Max's hologram. Ben. Grandpa I said, but the message interrupted me. Max recording, I left this recording in a place I knew only you could find. I'm in the middle of a problem, but it's nothing to worry about. There is new alien activity on Earth and I'm investigating it. And don't worry about your Omnitrix and Issei's either, I have them and they are safe, they will never be found and say hello to your cousin Gwen for me. I love you, Max out. Grandpa's hologram said and the message is over but Grandpa doesn't have my Omnitrix or Issei's, I have them kept in a cardboard in my closet. Ben. That you have the Omnitrix. I said and I rode my big chilkle to go back home, and I almost crashed into a pink and black motorcycle driver. When I got home I went up the stairs and I heard my mother say not to run at home, when I got home room I opened my closet and found the box with my memories from the summer of five years ago, and I not only found my Omnitrix, but also essays. Then. What are you trying to tell me, Grandpa? I asked myself that when I looked at both Omnitrix in my hands, and I started to take off my football clothes and put on a pair of blue jeans, black and white sneakers, a black t-shirt and a green jacket with white stripes with the number 10 the left. Just when I was thinking of going outside to tell Gwen, I heard a scream coming from the street, and I saw that there was a person lying on the ground near the entrance to my house, and I saw that his hairstyle looked very familiar to me. Ben. Hey, you're okay, aren't you Issei? I asked myself that when I saw my best friend again after five years and he hadn't aged at all. Issei. Damn, Azazel, why do almost all your inventions end Ben? Issei said when he saw me at 15 years old. Two heroes reunite after five years and Raynor escaped from the void along with Kevin Levin, what will Ben and Issei's adventure be like in their fight against this new enemy? Will Issei and Raynor meet again? Will they run into Kevin again? This story will continue in Ben 10 Alien Force DXD. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.